welcome to Historic Mount Zion. It's uh, Sunday, March 29th, and this is Bible Discovery Hour. Uh, the lesson for the day is leading justly. Leading justly. As we get ready to start today's lesson, we're going to start out with a song and then a prayer. Then we'll go into the lesson. The song for the day is What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. 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 Leading justly. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Oh, heavenly God, help us to understand this lesson. Yeah, Lord. God, I beseech you yes. to preach and teach and give us some understanding in regards to this lesson. Yes, Lord. God, we don't understand sometimes what you say or what you ask, God, but the benefits that come with your teaching, God, yes. is, <clears throat> is unfolding and it is immense, God, and it just comes on us like the rain from heaven. Oh, yes. So, God, as we come to you today, God, again, I ask that you be with us as we go through this lesson today. God, we're praying for those people out there who are scared, those Lord. people who just don't understand What's going on in this world, God? So I ask you, just as the fog lifts on Jacksonville today, yeah, lift this plague from us, God. Lift whatever's going on from us, God, because we know Satan will not win. So, God, we come to you again in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Leading justly. So, Lord, what, what's going on here? is uh, in Malachi, and we know that Malachi is one of the minor prophets, and it's specific to the amount of books that are in his chapter. So there is not many there, but still the message is powerful. It's continuing on with the, um, with the lessons that have been going on in this quarter about unjust leaders, unjust religious leaders. So leading justly is talking about the antithesis, if you will, how we're supposed to lead as opposed to how we're being led. And it says now the aim of change, it says by the end of the lesson, we will determine the significance of justice for spiritual leadership, affirm the value of covenanted reference of God for leadership and practice just spiritual leadership. So it's talking about the Levites. The Levites. So we know that the Levites uh, came from Levi, Amen. right? Which is the son of Jacob. Yes. Sir. Right. Yes. So way back in the day, Moses was essentially saying, "Who, who are going to be the folks, the spiritual leaders that are going to lead us?" Wow. Wow. Right. And so right. then he chose the sons of Levi, and Aaron came from that. Right. And, and so now as things progressed, those guys, they led <clears throat> justly. Mm -hmm. They were just priests. And if you go back to it, that's again why Moses chose them. But now as time evolved, we get down to the people who have just been liberated from Egypt. And those folks, those people of Judah, aren't living right. Now why aren't they living right? Because they're being taught incorrectly. And if you think about it, that's the same kind of thing that's going on today. So as we read through Malachi, we're going to read the, uh, the lesson text. And what it says in Malachi, the second chapter, the first verse, it says, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse unto you and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I will curse them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung among your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall and one shall take you away from it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that if my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts, my covenant has with them of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of 
truth was in, was in his mouth, and inequity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn, from, <clears throat> did turn many away from inequity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, right. and they should seek the law of his mouth. He is the messenger of the Lord of hosts, but ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble mm -hmm. at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as ye have not kept my way, but have been partial in the law. Now we're going to the third chapter, the fifth to the sixth verse, and it says, And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be swift be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers, have against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hurling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turn aside from the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Leading justly. So God starts off this passage and he says, If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to your heart to give glory unto my name. So that's that's interesting because as we think about the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. right? That prayer, Jesus starts off, he's basically giving reverence to the name of the Father, right? And that's the way we're supposed to do as we pray, as we talk to God, we're supposed to give him reverence. We're supposed to give him glory. But what was going on is these priests back then were not giving God his glory. They were doing everything contrary to what the scripture said yeah, we're right. supposed to do. Yeah. So now it was being prophetic in, in, in this word that God is saying, y'all are supposed to give me reverence. Y'all are supposed to yeah, give me yeah. glory. That's, that's why we were created, right? Yeah. God said, I'm going to create man in my own image, but they're supposed to glorify me. Yeah, yeah. So they stopped that. And what happened now is they're doing everything under the sun. My Lord. Fast forward to 2020. We're doing everything under the sun. Some people are being told to stay home in this COVID-19 era, in this, in this virus, in whatever's going on. But it's saying a lot of the younger folks aren't taking heed. That's right. They're doing whatever they want to do right. and, and right. they're not taking heed because they don't think right. that this virus mm -hmm. is going to affect them. My Lord. So if we keep reading, it says, I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessing. So now God is saying, if, if you don't reverence me, I'm going to send a curse there. Mm -hmm. And the other day, um, mm -hmm. Pastor was talking about the, the plagues of Israel and he asked, so how many plagues were there, right? And, and someone said seven, and somebody came back and, and said, okay, there were ten. And we went through and, and we named those ten plagues that came upon uh, Egypt. But now we look at the plagues that are coming upon the children, or actually the priests who are in, in this order, if you will. So I, I think about, are, are we being plagued today? Are, are we being plagued right now for the sins of our fathers, the sins of the priest, or the sins that we committed? I don't know. I don't know. I just ponder that, right. and I ask you to think about that as well. Are, are we being plagued right now, or is it Satan doing his will that God's allowing him to do? Verse 3 says, Behold, I will corrupt your seed. In the Bible, it talks about an adulterous generation, mm. right? That seed becomes corrupted, and we become a, an adulterous generation, and we are filled with an reprobated mind, yeah. which is which is hard for me sometimes. You sit back and you and you think about God. Why would you do such a thing to us? You created us, God. You are loving God, why would you let those kinds of things happen to us? Mm. And it goes back to the first commandment, right? God said, you should love me as your God. Right. And when we stop doing that, 
And God said, no, I, I'm not. He allowed certain things to happen, but ultimately he says, I'm not going to take it. I ask you to do a simple thing and love me, and you don't. And, you know, Brother Larry, I was, thinking, I was thinking about this here. Someone mentioned this to me the other day. God wants us to love the Lord, thank God with all that heart, soul, and mind. And so those other gods that people praise, their jobs, their homes, their mm -hmm. cars, uh, their families, um, money or whatever, all those things. Um, God is putting distance of uh, celebrities, movie stars, athletes. God is now sh has now shut all of that down. You understand know what I'm saying? And now uh, we're all uh, prayerfully in our homes in mm -hmm. small groups. Mm -hmm. And I believe God is saying, you know, be still and know that I am God. Amen. I Amen. gave you a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, but now I'm going to have to shut it down. And it's not just in one particular uh, people or culture, ethnicity, but it's, uh, it's, it's globally. Yes. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it, right along with you. So this, and I see this as, as we, where you're teaching it. To me, it's a form of a play. Amen. And it's a silent enemy. Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yes, I'm done. And uh, like I used, when you mentioned now, I hate to say our young adults, but there's a certain segment of our culture, of our, our world, they praise um, uh, the athletes. But now you can't go to the game. You used to go on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, all the football games and the basketball games and all, all that's been shut down. So yes. now, now I'm praying that people see this as an opportunity to draw closer to God. Amen. You know, we was on the, we was on the way over here today, and uh, people were washing their cars. Some of the, you know, still doing some of the same things. I'm thinking. Do they realize this opportunity to, to maybe God is trying to tell us something? Yes. You know, so that's my, yes. that's my spin on it. Well, well and, and you said something that's, that's for me, apropos. Right. It says, behold, I will corrupt your seed right. and spread dung among your faces. Mm. Right. I will corrupt your seed. Uh. If, if I look at our culture, mm -hmm. uh, in, in our culture nowadays, if if we as, as parents have a son who's six seven. Yes, sir. Have a son who's big and burly and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We basically start touting the, the, the basically the athleticism right. of that son or True. of that daughter right. because we're trying to channel mm -hmm. him or her into going into becoming an athlete. Right. Why? Solely because they can become famous or they can become rich. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, and so now, <laughs> as as. As I read Proverbs some months ago, I was befuddled because one of the passages it says in in Proverbs it says, "Strive not to become rich." Amen, brother Larry. As, you, as you're talking about that, I want to just welcome Sister Dolores Brown. She's watching live via uh, Facebook. Good morning, Sister Brown. Good morning, Sister Brown. So it's 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 amazing as as we talk about strive not to become rich because. As we tell our seed, you know, what do you want to do? You want to become an athlete, you want to become a lawyer, you want to become a doctor, you want to become all these things that the world has said they should become in order to become rich. We don't, we don't tell our kids that you should strive to know God's word. And the scripture says, seek ye first. Right. The Matthew kingdom 6, of God yes. yeah. and all these all other right. things yes. will yes. be added. But seek ye first. first the kingdom of God because he is the one that will provide those things yes. for you but yeah, you have yeah. to seek him first yes. make him lord of our lives mm -hmm. he yeah. must always be first in our lives he has to be first yes he has to be first that's in the first commandment right what you just said sister maria that in matthew 6 33 right. about god being first and and we have a brother who who's with us he said he has testimony
parents were now rushing their children off to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now they have to deal with their own children's attitude. And all. So God is doing an amazing thing. God is doing an amazing Amen. thing. So I, I, I beg at you all who's under the sound of my voice to read, read Ephesians, the second chapter, the second verse. And as I was talking yesterday, I told somebody when a guy at work asked me, he said, so who do you think Satan is? Hmm. And as I looked and as I thought about it, I said it's Ephesians, the second chapter, the That's second right. verse. That's right. And it says... In that, it says, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, on, according to the prince of the power of the air, yeah. the spirit that now worketh in the children yes. of disobedience. Yeah. So if you think about that, That's you good. read it and contemplate it, and you think about the virus. Mm -hmm. This virus is only being spread through the air. Right? Mm -hmm. According to the powers that worketh in the prince of the air. We're talking about leading justly. We've got leaders who are corrupt, mm -hmm. who are telling people things that are false, who are leading them in a direction that God said, you shall not go. Mm -hmm. So as you ponder that thing, you think about the United States, you think about the rest of the world, because it said Jesus won't come back until the entire world knows about him. My Lord. So now we're getting an opportunity to spread the gospel. Yes, sir. Spread the gospel to those who don't know about Jesus for the pardoning of their sins. So now, just think about what's being said here in verse 3, because God said he's going to corrupt your seed, and he's going to spread dung among or upon your faces. Yes, upon our faces. <laughs> dung. Now, so the thing about dung, we, we've seen horse stuff. Come on now. We've seen cow stuff. My mind. We've seen human stuff. Can you imagine that being spread amongst your face? Waste. I can't. Yeah. As, as Pastor just said, it's waste. Mm -hmm. and, and when God does something, yeah. it's taken to a power, to a level that you just can't imagine, right? And it says, in the last part, it says, of your solemn feast, and one shall take away with it, mm -hmm. of your solemn feasts. Now, we've got crap in our feasts, y'all. My mind. we got crap in our feasts. When you go yeah. to the grocery store, you got COVID-19 lurking. Yes. Mm. Keep on going. So it says, and he shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you. So we've got a lot of people who are thinking, did God cause this COVID-19 to come upon us? To come upon us, I don't know. God's will ultimately will be done, right? Right. So, God's will being done again. God's letting Satan do whatever right. he that's wants that's to that's do in the world. world. So now, and I and, and the reason I say that is what happened with Job. Right. Mm -hmm. God says, Satan, where have you been? Mm -hmm. Satan said, I've been walking to yeah. and fro, that's up it, and down, yeah. looking for somebody to devour. Right. right? God said, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, yeah. God said, have you considered this plague upon the entire world? Mm -hmm. Right? What's going on now? We've got people saying it's because of the Chinese doing something. Is it? I don't know. The Chinese been doing something all throughout history. Yeah. Could it have been the United States doing something? And we blame it on the Chinese because we send a lot of stuff to China. I don't know. But God says, you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant may be with Levi, the Lord, said the Lord of hosts. Brother Larry. Yes. I, 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 the other day I was thinking about this. The enemy, the devil, uh, the enemy has revved up this game mm. in a mighty way. So now it's time for the people of God to rev up our game. I mean, I, I, really, I really see this like, now what you're going to do, now we're going to shut down your churches and then we'll be able to praise you. But, we, but we're coming together even in small groups. Yes, yes. To say yes. that the devil is alive. Yes. He will not steal our joy, steal, kill our joy. You understand know what I'm saying? Uh, amen. So amen. we got to, this is the time now, all of us, we have to, it's a new day and a new age. With all this technology we use, it's new to a lot of us. But through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, we, we, we will 
prevail in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And and ironically enough, what Pastor saying, I had asked him, I said to him several days ago, I said, man, how 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 can we get folks to, to come to church? How can we do this? And what he said is it's only through prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting, as, as we are locked in our closets, mm, come on, man. as we're locked in our closets, what we need to do is go into those closets and pray to God. Pray to God continuously, as it says in Luke, the 18th chapter, the first verse, it said what Jesus said is the way we're not to faint through all this is what's going on right now is we're supposed to pray. We, we've got to pray. We've got to talk to God continuously so that we, he knows that we need him right now. Amen. So continuing on, it says, you should know I did this. It says, my covenant was with him of life and peace. So God is giving us a covenant. Amen. Sister Brown say amen. Amen. So God's giving us a covenant, and it says that covenant is with him of life and peace. Life and peace. Who is that? This is basically Old Testament talking about New Testament Savior, right? It's talking about that New Testament Savior. It's talking about Jesus. Yes. So Jesus said in John, it says, I have come to give life, and I have come to give it more abundantly. Amen. And we call Jesus the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Now, so in this verse, it says, my covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. Amen. So God, God's doing a mighty work as he's talking to these priests. He's saying, y'all, get back on the path of righteousness. That's because right. if y'all don't, I'm going to do something to y'all. We in the world need to get back on the path of righteousness. We yes. know as, as, as people who are over 30, we start talking about things like it was when we were growing up. Come on, imagine it, y'all. Yeah. Things like it was when we were growing up. Pastor just said we're in a technological age. But see, when we were growing up, our parents used to say, y'all get out of the house, y'all go outside yeah. and play. 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 Right. 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 right? So what are we saying now? What are, what's happened to us? Y'all don't go outside, y'all stay in this house, don't go out there. Mm -hmm. Why can't we go outside, y'all? Why can't we go outside? We were innovative back then. We made toys because we didn't have no money. That's right. Our parents didn't have any money to go off and buy all these things. My kids come to my house now with their children, and the first thing, they, they've got a car full of toys. My Lord. Kids can't play with them. Mm. And what are we doing now? We, we are teaching our kids to have idols. My Lord. Mm. We are teaching our kids to have idols. We didn't have those idols growing up. We right. had each other had each to socialize other. with, to right. play with, to go over to their houses, but now we don't do that. And what God, God, and God is bringing on. families back together. Amen. With all the technology, Amen. it was putting a, a divide within families. Families sitting around the dining room table, mom and daddy, all the kids got their iPhones, iPads, uh, their tablets, not t having conversations. Oftentimes we go to dinner, we see couples around us with their iPhones and not having a conversation. So we made it a point, sometimes we go to dinner, we set our iPad, our iPhones down. Sometimes uh, she takes mine, I take hers, you know. You know, just to have a conversation. And so I think God, God is all in, in the midst of all of this, bringing families back together in their own private uh, sanctuary of their home. So yeah. um, also, as we're um, looking at this, uh, this technology, I want to say, Good morning to Sister Paula Tolson. Thank you for joining us and watching us. God bless you. We love you all in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so we got to understand the technology. Because God said in Psalms, it says, I don't change. Right. I'm, oh, the no. same, I'm the same God from yesterday to today. Forevermore. Yes, sir. He said, okay, well, back then they didn't have no television, but they had something. They had acting. They were, they were watching plays. They didn't have telephones. They didn't. Yes, they did. You go look at the bottom of those pyramids. You'll find <laughs> out they had the telephones. They had the lights. They had everything that we've got now. But the plagues that are on us were not on them, right? We keep reading. It says the law of truth was in his 
mouth, and inequity was not found in this list. So right now they're talking about the Levites, mm -hmm. the priests. The law of truth was in their mouth. And, and, and I go back again to, to when I had asked one pastor about being called and being chosen. Mm -hmm. Right? What's the difference between called and chosen? God, first off, he calls you to do his bidding. But then he chooses you to stay the course. Yeah. So a person who's chosen is going to stay the course even when COVID-19 comes in. He's yes. not or she's not separating yes. themselves from anything because they know that God's hand is upon Amen. them. Right. So yes. see, when, when God says the truth is being spoken from yeah. their lips, those people were professing truth. Unlike what's going on now, what was going on then, people were talking about falsehoods. Mm -hmm. People yeah. were professing yeah. stuff and telling people things that wasn't the truth and, and not showing them the way that they should go. Right. Yeah. Now think about that this, these days. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got a, a uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we've got a president when being asked, would you go to Jesus and profess your sins what he said is, no, because I haven't done anything wrong. We, we have short-sightedness in our leadership. And, and what, this, what this lesson is talking about is leading justly. And that was a clip. I hate to bring this up, and I, I'm, I'm assuming it's correct. I read it online somewhere that this leader said that he has done more for people than Jesus Christ. When I read that, it was a quote. It was a quote somewhere. I mean, we looked at my wife showed it to me. It was somebody, you know, sometimes he can run up with the mouth. Yes. And he, apparently he said this. Uh, I don't know what the full uh, situation was at the time, but he said this. And I was just appalled at that. And so now when you, when that's, to me that's blasphemy. And now look what's happening to us now. And, and, and you said earlier about seeking the first kingdom of God. So now, people of God, the children of God, we have to be very, you have to be intentional with seeking out God's face through your cell phone, your pad, your computer, your Bible. You, 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 it's unhealthy, quote unquote, to gather in large groups. So now, those who really love me, you got to seek my face. Yes. You got to get out of your comfort zone and learn to get on Facebook and learn to get on YouTube and go in and, and, and get rid of your um, uh, your flip phone and get a, a, a I'm just serious, yes, a smartphone yes, yes. and get reconnected mm -hmm. because I uh, someone to the other day, this technology is not going away. And this, one, this, not, this I don't believe this is a new normal. It's a part of the new normal. Yes. You know, the continue, yes. and it's a broader uh, perspective, broader um, uh, venue to reach a, a many, many people. You know, right, so, so, right. So, yeah. We have to be intentional now with, with um, we could have stayed home, stayed in our beds, or well, well, let's just wait for things to pass. But now we got to be intentional with coming together. Go ahead. Melinda. And we have to remember, too, even though the doors of the buildings okay. are closed, mm -hmm. we are the church. That's right. And we can That's have right. church anywhere we want yes, to have. Yes, yes. Because yes. we are the church. Amen. Yes. We, we are the church, but. I want to go back to something Pastor said. This technology will not go away. The, the technology won't go away, but you have to have people to make it. Right? Just think about it. If, if you can't go to work, I don't have anybody who's going to be able to manufacture that cell phone. I don't have anybody who's going to be able to manufacture that flat screen TV. I don't have anybody who's going to be able to make those games for Come us because they can't go to work. They're, told, they're being told to stay home. Right. So now think about it. Go, as you go to the grocery store, which I have, a lot of shelves that are empty. Mm -hmm. well, why is that? Truckers can't truck. People can't go out and harvest food. So what do you do now? We're not like our ancestors, because everybody had a farm back then. Yes. Everybody had the chickens. Everybody had whatever. So when, when they needed food, I, I remember my cousin, we went to the hog pen, and he said, get that one right there. Mm -hmm. That was the grocery store, so it was, it was live and it was fresh. We can't go outside and get anything from our yards because we don't know what is edible and what's not. No, my, we, my. We've lost that technology. You know, I was thinking about that on the day and that shit will read Because of what's going on, I, yeah, I think I did tell her. I said, you know, I might need to start growing at least uh, some tomatoes and some peppers. 
you know, because my where we're living now, my aunt they did all. They had a roll of greens, some mustards. They had peanuts. They had tomatoes. They had fruit, or, or different fruit trees. But no, we 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 took all that for granted. And we God, did. to me, is drawing us back to all of that. Yes. You know. Yes, and and, and I would say the last thing on that: if if you ever grew something, and you had a garden and you ate it, if you were able to taste the freshness from yes. that garden yes. versus what you get out of the grocery store, it'll make you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continuing on with this lesson, it says, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The priest's knowledge. It says God gave some pastors, he gave some preachers, he gave some teachers, he gave some prophets. God has given gifts to people. And as we read through this Bible, I, I know a lot of times you read through the Bible, I do, and I don't get it. We don't get it. God has given us people who shed light on this Bible, who edifies us so we can get that knowledge and get that understanding. He didn't tell those people to do the wrong thing with his word to his people, right? That's what these priests were doing. Again, God said, give them the right knowledge. And that's what God is telling his people again today, his preachers, his teachers, the ones he's given those gifts to, give them the right knowledge. But then he said in verse 8, but ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Many to stumble at the law. So so ponder that. Because we hear about corruptness in the land all the time. Mm. Back then, they, they only heard it through word of mouth. But because we have technology, we can hear it in an instant on, in the news. Right. So as <clears throat> I beckon you, as a brother and I have been praying at 4.30 in the morning um, this past week. What, what he said is, man, Larry, it's time for us to turn off the TV. My, my, my. And if you think about that, turning off the TV, you, you think, well, how would I get the news? How would I know about what I need to do in order to combat the injustice that's going on in the world right now? God said he will give the priests the right knowledge. He will give us information yes. that we should know and, 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 and let me tell you, everybody who's lived on this earth <clears throat> for, a, for a matter of time has been given some information that we don't know where it came from. Brother, you got a, you got your hand up back there? Yeah, that's why um, with all this corrupt and false information that's being put out, that's why um, God says that you got to ask God to give you the uh, gift to be able to discern. church because 
people would start saying something, and there was this one lady who would sit home, all she did was go to church and watch TV, and, mm -hmm. and he just commented on, she started singing a song, and she started off with, what a friend we have in Jesus, and then she started saying the weather started giving rough because the tiny ship was lost. Right? So she started going into the Gilligan's Isles. <laughs> right? right. She, started, she started singing Gilligan's Isles where pe <laughs> and, but people were still just clapping and saying yeah, amen. Because you know, yeah, people, people are thinking that, yeah, they, they've got to be talking about God and uh -oh. they stop listening. Right. <laughs> so that's where we need to have reading and understanding for ourselves. It says again in verse 8, but he departed out of the way he have caused many to stumble at the law. We have caused many to stumble at the law. And and I, I was telling someone the other day, marriages. I got married. My daughter's getting married. And we all want to have these big church weddings. My Lord. Man, we want to have these big church weddings. And, and one of the things that the priest says in those weddings, it says what God has put together let no man put us up. Yeah. The divorce rate is pretty high. What are we doing? We're going to man to put us under. Mm. If we are rushing to God to put us together, mm. but we are rushing to man. Mm. We're mm. stumbling at the law. Mm -hmm. We're going to man to put us under. If God said, no, you're causing people to stumble. So I just beckon those priests and those teachers and those pastors to understand God's law and yeah. to preach the right word to God's people. It says, therefore, therefore, based on what was just said, have I also made you contemptible and based before all people. Contemptible. What does that mean? God showing his people that these people that have been put before us, they're people just like you are. They can be Tempted just like mm -hmm. you have been. <clears throat> Contemptible. Root word is tempt. So now those people <coughs> can be tempted that have been put before us. But those people are supposed to know God's word yeah. better than we do. So they know that if they don't put on that breastplate, mm -hmm. if they don't put on that helmet, if they don't gird their loins, then they will be tempted more so than we would. That this passage basically said is Satan is tempting him more than he's tempting me. Well, why is that? Mm -hmm. Because he, Satan knows that he gets to more people than I do. Right? He is listened to more than I do. Now, God said they are contemptible. And we, we know of leaders who have been out there in the press, <clears throat> religious leaders, and, and they've been shown um, where they've been at a downfall and what they've done. And you look at them and say, well, how could he or she do that? How could they do things that, that they shouldn't do? But again, God knows, well, God has shown that they're contemptible. Now we're in the verse, the correction in chapter 3, verse 5, it says, and I will come near to you, and I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers. So where have you heard that before? There you go. The brother in the back said Revelation. Because in Revelation it says, Jesus said, I come quickly. Mm -hmm. I come quickly. In January, it talked about COVID-19 in China. It started, and it came quickly. It came quickly through the rest of the world. And, and if you sit back and think about it, you say, how can it spread like that? Right? We, my mother, who's 94 years old, yesterday I'm talking to her. She said, I've never known a time like this in my life. 94 years old, and you could probably go back to, if, if we can revive our grandparents, they will tell you the same thing. I've never known a time like this in my life. And it says, God said, I will come near to you swiftly against those things that are not of him. So it's just like the plague in Moses' day where this 
pastors also say it puts an anointing of oil on your doorpost. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering, should we be putting that anointing of oil as we are in our houses? We've been made to stay in our houses. Should we be having that oil on our doorpost? Mm. The only way we're going to have that oil on our doorpost is through the grace of God through getting on our knees. And I go back to what Pastor said through prayer and fasting, because God's going to come against the evil as He did. He as He came against the evil of that day. He's coming against the false witnesses, the adulterers, people who know they're doing wrong but they're continuing to do that in spite of what God said. And then the last verse, it says, for I am the Lord. Mm, yeah. For I am the Lord. So now God is saying, give me my just due. I'm telling you who I am. I'm telling you who's saying this. And, and I want you to look at this verse. Because in the Bible, somebody asked God, it says, so who should I tell the people who's sending me? And it says, tell the people it's the I am. The I am that sent me. Look at this verse. It says, for I am. I am the Lord. It's referencing back to that passage of scripture. God, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Ye sons of Jacob, those those people who are listening to me right now, you are the sons of Jacob. You're the sons of Israel. And we're not to be consumed with the evilness that are going, that's going on in this world right now. The crookedness that's going on in this world right now. We're not to be consumed with it. Because what it says in the Bible, it says those things that taste good in the mouth, they go down to the belly and it makes you feel bad. So those things, those things that are corruptible, it goes back to says he made a corrupt seed. Becoming those lawyers, those doctors, those athletes and making all this money, the corrupt seed, right? When we didn't have anything, when we were told we were poor, we had the best time of our life. On Sundays, mama would cook the food and you know after church you're going to have you some cake. He didn't have cake all the time, right? But on Sundays, we yes. had cake and we didn't have diabetes because we, we could eat cake all the time. We were able to eat cake and then we went to visit with each other. We wasn't sitting home and watching TV. We were able to go see people. So leading justly. Leading justly means going back to the 23rd Psalms. I will lead you in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. That's where God's going to lead us. God's going to give us leaders who are incorruptible, yes, yes. right? God's going to give us leaders who will teach his word justly. So I've gone through this, y'all, and, and if, there are, if there are words coming from people who are, are listening, please pass it on to Pastor so we can make sure questions get answered. Is there any comments, anything from everybody who's assembled here now? So... Again, I, I thank you all for listening. I, I pray to God that that we all will make it through. I know we will through the COVID-19. I just Amen. ask us all to be a chorus, have a chorus of prayers that are being lifted up to God so that this shoe shall pass Amen. and it will pass swiftly. All hearts are satisfied. We say good morning to Brother Roosevelt Pryor. Thank you for watching us this morning. And as we close out this morning for um, Sunday School, Pastor, do you have any words, final yes. words? Please watch us on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is HMZ space AMEC on our YouTube channel. So please check us out, and hopefully we'll post this later on to YouTube. Would you please close us out in a word of prayer, please? Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you now, God. Again, thanking you for the, the gifts that you've given us. Yes, Lord. God, you've given us so many things, God, and, and we just turn away from them because we don't know how powerful they are. Yeah. So, God, I go back to the most precious gift that you've given us, which is Jesus. Yes, yes. You've Thank given you, us Jesus so that we can live with you in eternity. Yes. So, God, I know that this, this what we're
we're going through right now can only be refuted, can only be proved wrong, can only be taken back yes. through the name of Jesus. You said Jesus, he came so we could have life and we can live it more abundantly, yes, God. Lord, thank so you. we want to live that life. Yes, we want to live it, God, coming to you in prayer and coming to you in fasting. God, I hope and I pray that somebody has gotten a word from you today. A word that's not corruptible, God. Yes, a word that, Lord, will be lifted up to you so it's a light that's on a hill so people will be beckoned to come to you yes, and say, Lord. what must I do to be yes, saved? Lord. God, so we just come to you in earnest and in prayer right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody have a blessed and beautiful day. And thank you, Brother Major, for leading our class this morning.